हाई गाइज फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माई क्रेजी अपडेट्स Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this, the third generation of the Maruti Suzuki wagon R. Yes, it is in its seventh generation globally, where it's known as a key car. A key car is basically Japanese way of saying a small car. In India, we restricted by length, sub four meter. But in Japan, they not only restricted by length, they also restricted by width. That's why this car is taller than it is wider. And straight away, let's open the engine bay of this vehicle. Now, this is powered by a 1.2 liter engine, which also powers the Ignis. It's known as the K12 motor. and i think it can also take a 1.5 liter engine because the engine bay is kind of vacant and there's no insulation over here in terms of aesthetics yes the design language sees more of an evolution than a revolution the lights are bigger now it gets this nice kink which maruti is also using in its marketing promotions and this is a split square light sort of square split because the indicator is placed over here this is the headlight this is the fog lamp of this vehicle this is the towing hook the grill gets the chrome treatment suzuki logo over there and it looks less boxy now compared to the old model both at the front as well as the rear because there's some curves on this vehicle however from the side it still looks quite boxy although maruti suzuki has given it the floating roof appearance because the c pillar gets this treatment over here which is kind of nice the wheels are still quite small on this vehicle you can see these are 165 70 14 inches meanwhile yes it doesn't look that boxy as before but still it is a boxy car but what i like are these new mirrors now they are not the tall ones they are internally adjustable as well and they get the indicator over here too So let's quickly get at the rear, and at the rear it gets this vertical light again. Some sort of curves certainly looks better than before. Chrome over here with wagon are engraved inside rear parking sensors, and definitely the front and the rear design don't really match as such. Now this might remind you of Honda cars like the CRV or probably even Volvo cars, but definitely the wagon are looks fresher now. There's a lot of glass area in this vehicle, and from the side, of course, it's not a very long car as such. It's a boxy car. Maruti Suzuki and its suppliers have actually invested rupees six seventy crores in the development of this vehicle, and they've sold more than two point two million units of the Wagoner in the past almost twenty years. Let's quickly open the boot. So you press this button. Oh God, the car keeps locking on its own auto lock, and. There it opens. One press on the button will open the driver's door. Another press will open all other doors, and the boot is massive. In fact, this is a 341 liter boot, which is bigger than both the Swift as well as the Ignis. But the loading lip is on the higher side. You can fold these seats as well. 60/40 split folding seats. Yes, you can fold them 60/40 format, and that increases the boot carrying capacity to a massive 710 liters. So yes the boot is massive for a car of this size take note Hyundai Santro okay here you go pushing the seat all the way up and as you can see there's a lot of space in the rear the wagon R was always a spacious car this one is even more so because the wheelbase has increased by 35 mm and the doors they almost open 90 degrees so getting in and out is an easy task good amount of legroom and knee room under thigh support isn't that great but headroom is massive in this vehicle there's so much headroom even for a person of my height and because the car is now wider by 125 mm three people can actually sit in the rear seat meanwhile at the front the two people who sit are not going to rub their shoulders anymore thanks to the wider cabin of this vehicle so all the headrests are fixed in this car no center headrest over here which is kind of disappointing and seat belts are also not adjustable the seats are under great though because they don't have too much of depth however they are kind of flat decent for short drives not so much for longer drives because you will feel uncomfortable now the chime is on because the headlight is on turning off the headlight you can see the door pockets are big enough you can keep a 1 liter bottle over here you can keep knick knacks over here these are power window controls which come from other maruti cars and the mirror controls are over here these are power window switches you know at the rear the door pockets are decent size as well you can keep a 1 liter bottle over here You can see there's a dead pedal over there and right away let me tell you that the cabin feels way better than before fit finish levels have definitely seen an improvement let me quickly turn on the vehicle and it comes to life power window gets the auto function only while going down not while coming up So the steering wheel comes from the Ignis it gets audio controls over here manual air conditioning air conditioning works actually quite well there's a deep pocket over here but it's not very wide for the glove box meanwhile the AC vents are awkward shaped 
and there's no symmetry as such over here especially in the center console because of the quirkiness of the wagon now there's a space over here to keep stuff storage space good enough meanwhile there's a small storage space over here there's a 12 volt charging socket over here there's an aux as well as a usb port over here this is this is strong big new wagon now there's some chocolates and all over here right now along with mint so this is the hazard light switch and this new instrument cluster looks really very nice it gets an orange backlight and of course orange graphics in the center we get the speedometer small inset tachometer over there which is not there on the lower trims it's only there on the z trims meanwhile there's a multi-information display over here inset in the tachometer itself the tachometer itself very small the multi-information display although it's readable it's still on the smaller side so it'll tell you average fuel consumption it'll tell you real-time fuel consumption it'll tell you what is the range of the vehicle the odometer twin trip meters as well and there's a clock below there's the fuel meter over there there's no temperature meter but their telltale light to tell you exactly if the car is getting heated up meanwhile there is the headlight leveler over here three dummy buttons over here the air conditioning does work well no auto dimming inside your view mirror obviously at this price you can't expect that this is the light switch over here and there is a place to keep your toll receipt there's a mirror over here which is again a nice touch there's a handle to hold on to there's no handle over here to hold on to good amount of headroom the front seats are comfortable but under thigh support isn't that great now the gear lever is attached to the center console it makes it more engaging to drive this vehicle and over here these are the controls for the wipers you can see the wipers work well good amount of spray over here there's a rear wiper as well rear defogger demister all of that is present in this vehicle and on the right we get the controls for the headlights this infotainment system is very nice it's known as the smart play studio it gets a seven inch screen it gets apple carplay as well as android auto connectivity which by the way is missing in the range rover vogue which i am driving these days kind of disappointing it doesn't get a reverse parking camera but it does get reverse parking sensors and when you get into reverse it does show you the swift over there for your reverse not a wagon r well obviously the swift is a more popular car anyways as you can see this system is very fluid and nice to use the audio quality is decent it is not that great though dude i'm already ready what do i get ready now basically the smart play studio system gets a lot of cloud-based apps so you can obviously do a lot with this using apps meanwhile using the app on your phone for this infotainment system you can also use your phone as a remote to control this infotainment system which is kind of cool and this car also meets all new regulation norms which means that it's going to be at 80 kilometers per hour it's going to be at 120 kilometers per hour and it also gets seatbelt reminders for both the front seats as well anyways let's get driving into first gear revving the motor all the way rev still almost 5000 rpm and here we go lot of wheel spin on offer this motor revs a lot very cleanly good amount of punch on offer definitely this engine feels really very punchy and of course extremely refined as well this 1.2 liter engine produces 83 horsepower and 113 newton meters of torque and i think it's an overkill for this car because there's just so much performance on offer there's just too much performance on offer for a wagon r and the one liter engine which produces 67 horsepower and 90 newton meters of torque is just about adequate for the wagon r or rather more than adequate for the wagon r but this one is an absolute flyer it has a power to weight ratio of more than hold your breath yes that's right more than 100 bhp or rather almost 100 bhp gives it terrific performance on offer it really flies this car and this just way too much thrust on offer any gear after you get over the minor lag which is there lower down this car is an absolute rocket of sorts great power to rate ratio great engine as well it is extremely refined mid-range is strong because low end has that minor lag but in the mid-range it absolutely flies and the top end it screams so power built up is all the way till the top end red lines at 6000 rpm and after 5000 rpm it just protests a lot because it just feels too noisy makes a lot of noise as well it just screams and insulation isn't great on this vehicle so obviously you can hear a lot of the road noise as well as the engine noise in this vehicle the steering doesn't offer any feel or feedback as such it is light but doesn't weigh up at all that's the kind of wheel spin on offer it really punches hard and fast now this is underpinned by the fifth generation of the hardtech platform which is also used in the swift as well as the ertiga and it is stiffer and lighter 
the weight has reduced by around 50 to 65 kgs depending on the variant the ages variants actually weigh 10 kgs more and because of the lighter weight the power to weight ratio is definitely way better than before however the stiffer chassis means that this car does drive much better than before it doesn't crash through bumps as badly as before and the suspension is on the softer side so low speed ride is very good and when you really go hard and fast over bad roads that's when the suspension really crashes through and does make a lot of noise because the nvh isn't the best over here yes it does make a lot of noise on bad roads through the suspension as well as road noise also there tire noises there wind noises there at higher speeds but in terms of dynamics this car feels so much more composed it's not a driver's car by any means of imagination there is still a lot of body roll on offer and like i told you the steering offers no feel and feedback whatsoever but in terms of confidence it certainly feels much better the suspension doesn't crash through so badly and doesn't feel so wobbly either which means that the wagoner's dynamics has certainly improved for the better even the brakes they offer good stopping power and feel sure-footed although slight amount of nose dive under heavy braking and the tires do screech as well how under tired is the wagoner well look at this you can point the steering one side the wheels will keep spinning and it will keep going so this car definitely feels like a proper update compared to the older wagon R. feels so much better this engine offers terrific performance now there are 12 variants on offer six for the one liter and six for the 1.2 the 1.2 is available in vx high and zx high trims meanwhile the one liter is available in lx high and vx high trims and automatic is available in both the gearbox isn't the slickest in terms of shifts you really have to push it a bit to get into a gear you want meanwhile the ages offers the convenience but has the laggy effect at full throttle of course meanwhile nvh could have been certainly better although it's way better than before it could have been slightly more refined but due to the light build of the vehicle expectedly it doesn't feel as silent inside the cabin the engine punches hard and fast the price range starts at rupees 5.15 lakhs for the base variant meanwhile this particular model the top of the line manual 1.2 zxi is priced at rupees 6.35 lakhs meanwhile the top of the line automatic ags is priced at almost rupees 6.9 lakhs 6 lakh 90000 which makes it a pretty premium of rupees 55,000 for the automatic variants in fact the automatics are rather expensive in the sense that the base automatic which happens to be the one liter vx high variant itself costs almost as much as the top of the line manual well i know i'm confusing you guys what i'm trying to tell you is that if you want to buy a wagon now you're still better off with the one liter whether you're opting for the manual or the automatic because unless and until you want to drive enthusiastically there's no point getting the 1.2 liter engine the 1.2 liter engine wagon i just feel like an overkill because there's just too much performance on offer and the body doesn't support because there's roll on offer the steering doesn't offer much feel and the tires they just keep spinning and spinning and spinning yeah red lines at 6000 rpm so guys this is my review of the maruti wagon r if you liked it you know what you have to do give it the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel yes this car has a lot of punch on the highway it doesn't bog down out on the highway at all that's the level of performance on offer definitely a fast car now but i wish it had more dynamics anyways guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye